you know, to sum it all up, you know, here's the thing about it. Black men and women in this country are going to jail in alarming numbers. Many of the factors that is causing us to be in situations or environments that jail becomes the end result, the underlying cause is anxiety and stress. Which, when a person is experiencing anxiety or going through stress stressful individuations, we quickly run out of an intelligent argument. My dad used to always say to me, be careful when you're arguing with people in the street. One of two things is always going to happen. Somebody going to get tired of talking. And somebody's going to be ready to do something else. When a person runs out of an intelligent argument, the next course of action is violence. Period. Now, there are so many conditioning let me let me rephrase that. There are so many conditions in place. There are so many things in place that aid or contribute to black men and women being forced into situations that produce jail that is almost beyond our hands. This very system is designed for black men and women to fail, but in particular the black men. But as we see in our recent history, we have our sisters that have come through the, um, the jail houses and don't even get fully processed because they get killed while they're there too. So this, this, this system, make no mistake about it, is designed to take us up out of here. But to the glory of God, we are a resilient people. The pressure coming from the transatlantic slave trade and the trauma that it has induced intergenerationally that is showing up as genetic markers contributing to this phenomena known as an epigenetic syndrome is not equal to the spirit of black people which has continually triumphed over all of these atrocities. Any one set of interactions or experiences could have or should have destroyed us as a people. Contrary to popular opinion, we ain't supposed to be here. Save God has a plan for his people. And as he says, no weapon formed against you can destroy you. So to the credit of black faith in their omnipotent creator, the almighty, God almighty, and to the glory of God, we are resiliently triumphing over all these things. And what's sad is that People like Rachel Yehuda will go and look at Holocaust survivors and will go so far as to say, well, we can see the genetic markers that are showing up on their DNA that shows intergenerational trauma. And we can also see that there are low cortisol levels in the biochemistry of the body. And cortisol is a hormone that regulates or brings normalcy to reinstate a state of peace when a person has experienced extreme trauma. To people who have survived trauma, nine out of 10 of them have very low levels of this hormone called cortisol. So Rachel Yehuda's work from Mount Sinai shows that there are low cortisol levels in Holocaust survivors. But She's never looked at African Americans. But to the glory of God, let's look at this. There have been other tests conducted, independent of the test that she take and have underwent, to compare and contrast cortisol levels in African Americans and other races. And guess what they found? They found that cortisol is the lowest in 
African Americans and Latinos in this country who all share one thing in common, the transatlantic slave trade. And the cortisol levels make it so that normalcy cannot be achieved after trauma is experienced. Make it so that you cannot get up, pick the pieces up, and begin to respond better. To add insult to injury, here's what science also knows, what science knows. There are certain things that can trigger these genetic markers to begin to communicate to the cells and turn on these features that cause negative responses in us. For instance, remember the three modalities to healing anxiety disorders are suppression, isolation, and articulation. Let's start with the first one and I'll close it door here. Suppression is the idea that, you know, stop thinking about it, remove yourself from that environment, treat it like it doesn't exist. Take it out of your sight so that it's out of your mind, right? In the last two to three years, how many slave movies have we seen? Oh man, 12. <laughs> There's well, been an explosion of years. slave movies, right? Yeah, Let's take it a step further. In the last 50 years, how many slave movies have there been? They continually remind you of that traumatic experience your ancestors experienced because they consciously realize that that actually turns on those genetic markers responsible for causing negative reactions in you that present itself as anxiety. That's the reality. Here's another thing that they know. They know that Isolation is the second modality to approach and healing, right? Remove yourself from that environment, right? Now, going back to suppression, which is the idea of removing oneself mentally and physically, when we talk about African American history in this country, what is the genesis or where does it begin? Is it not slavery? Slavery. They don't begin African history with the pyramids in Egypt. They don't begin African history with arithmetic, science, and philosophy that we birth civilizations with. Slavery. They begin it with the transatlantic slave trade, right? Right. So what this is causing now is these genetic markers that are in place, that are lying dormant, are now turned on by the visualization of these images. Let me tell you something. There's a new warfare that is approaching our era. And it's called biological and biochemical warfare. Yes, sir. We now have technology, and I was looking at this um, earlier today. It's called the RNA, RFNA um, genome that they're putting inside of plants. You can actually inject various species of food with various illnesses and diseases that target races. So, I could be in a room full of a very diverse group of people, such as Italians, West Africans, European Jews. We can all eat from the same pot, which has a disease hidden insidiously within its chemicals, right? Right. And it will only have an adverse in my African body. We have that technology today. Welcome to 2018, going into 2019. In fact, we've had that technology for over 30 years. Wow. Also, they tell us, and this is the last modality of approaching healing, they tell us that articulation, just being able to speak about what we go through, will bring healing, right? But whenever African people of the transatlantic slave trade, that diaspora wants to vent and speak about those atrocities, what do they tell us? Shut up. You're still whining about what happened, happened hundreds of years ago? ago? That happened a whole long time ago. But right. what do they tell 9-11 victims? Never forget. Never forget. What do they tell Holocaust survivors? Create memorials around this so that you do what? You never forget. Never forget. What do they tell black people? Shut up. Shut up. The three modalities that help us to approach healing are all consciously blocked. They don't allow for suppression, 
because they continually make sure that this is going to be the highlight of all of the cinematic images that you're watching on television and in the big screen movies. Isolation is impossible because there are instances in this country of police behaving like the very same taskmasters that were over us. Right. Those who were whipping us. Right. right? So they don't allow for isolation. And they definitely don't allow for articulation because they tell us, shut up, that happened years ago. Get over it. Right. Thank you. And I, and I end that thought there. <laughs> Thank you, my brother. Very um, insightful topic, and I'm sure that it's one that's going to help out quite a few people. Absolutely. Hallelujah. Shalom. Shalom.